Okay, now that we've loaded the mesh into the solver, let's begin setting up the case. So to start, let's turn on gravity. And if we display the mesh, we can see the gravity will point in the negative y direction. Okay, now let's begin setting up the material properties. So let's import carbon monoxide from the Fluent database. And we select copy. And now we can see that we have air and carbon monoxide, so we can click change and create. And now let's turn on the species model. So we're going to use species transport. We're going to leave the defaults so and we're going to hit apply. And now we're going to create the mixture template, so we click edit. Now we want to edit the mixture species. So here we can see that we have water, air, and nitrogen. And we want to add air and carbon monoxide. And let's remove water, oxygen, and nitrogen. So now we have our two species. And now we want to move air to the last species. So if it's the last species, it will remain as the primary phase. Okay. And let's leave these as default. So we've now created our mixture template. Okay, now we're going to begin creating our named expressions. So to start with, let's open up uh, the zones that we're going to be using. So we have our inlets and we have our fluid zones. So let's create the first name expression. So here we're going to call this the background. CO concentration, so background CO. And the background CO is around 9 ppm. So we need to convert this to mass fraction, which gives us a, a scaling factor of 1e e to the minus 6. And OK. Now we're going to create an expression for our CO source. So we're going to call it CO source. And the CO source is a measure of the mass flow rate and the area and the volume that the CO is produced in. So the definition is going to be a mass flow rate, which is 0 0.05 grams per second. And we're going to divide it by the total volume of the CO source. So if we go functions, reduce volume. And if we enter the name We enter the name of the volume, so we have CO dash solid. And if we refresh the value, we can see that this is our the value for our source term. And finally, we're going to create an expression for the mass flow rate out of the domain. So we're going to call it mass flow, mass flow out. And we're going to define it as a volumetric flow rate multiplied by the density at the surface. So our volumetric flow rate is going to be 200 liters per second. And we need to multiply it by the density. So the density will be the average density across the outlet surface. So if we go functions reduction average, here it's going to ask us for an expression. And we're going to use density. The location will be the outlet, so we're just going to use one outlet. So we're going to call it mass flow outlet 1. And the weight will be a area. Need to add quotation marks to the domain name. Cool. And if we refresh the value, we can see that the units are kilograms per second, which is a mass flow rate. And the current value is zero because we haven't initialized the solution, so the density is zero. Okay, so now let's add the source term to the CO solid. So we need to add source terms, enable that, choose source terms. And now we can see that we have mass and we have CO. So we want to add the same amount of mass and the same amount of CO to the system. So if we add the number of mass sources to be 1, 
we can use our expression that we created for CO. So CO source. Okay. And now we need to do the same thing for the CO. So we have one source. Okay, we've created our source term. Currently our mass flow outlets are defined as mass flow inlets. So we need to change them to mass flow outlets. So if we select all, right click, and we change the type to a mass flow outlet. And now if we select all, and we go multi-edit, we can now specify that the mass flow rate is given by an expression. And we'll use our mass flow expression that we created. And now we need to add the background CO to our pressure inlet. So if we specify an expression, and we say that it's the background CO. Okay, our boundary conditions are now set up. Okay, we'd like to measure all concentrations of CO using the units of PPM, or parts per million. So to do that, we're going to create a user-defined function, and we're going to create a custom field function. And we're going to use species and the mass fraction of CO. And we're going to multiply that by 10 to the 6 to create our PPM. We're going to call it CO PPM. Okay, we're now going to create some report definitions and use our custom field function. So we're going to go new. We're going to do a volume report. And we're going to report the maximum PPM within the volume. So we're going to call it PPM max or CO max. And we're going to use the custom field function. And we're going to report it within the domain, create a plot, and we're going to print it to console. We're going to repeat the process for an average PPM as well. We're also going to create a report definition and a monitor for the mass flow rate at the inlet, and this will help us determine if the solution has converged or not. You use, do this using the flux report, mass flow rate, and we're going to set the mass flow at the inlet. And we're also going to report this to plot and the console. We can now initialize the solution. So we have to initialize. Uh, let's start with a standard initialize. Let's upgrade to a hybrid initialize. And now we're going to patch in the background CO. At this point, we can begin creating some calculation activities and we can save and write the case and data. Okay, so now let's begin solving the solution. So if we had to run calculation, let's keep this as default for now. And let's run for, let's say, 20 iterations. And let's start calculating. Okay, now that we've run it for a small number of iterations, we can now clear the report plots so we can see any small changes in the results. So if we had to solve reports plots, and we go C-D, which means clear data, we use Wildstar to clear all the data. Now if we solve it again for another 100 iterations, we can still see that there's some oscillation in our report data, which means that the solution hasn't converged. So if we look at the maximum carbon monoxide, we can see that it's still oscillating. And if we go into the average, we can also see that it's oscillating quite a bit. So it still hasn't converged yet. The mass flow outlet is looking like it's converging. 
So now we're going to run the calculation again, but we're going to reduce the time scale factor to 0 0.5 and run it again for another 100 iterations. As we can see, the solution still hasn't converged because we're still seeing unsteadiness in, in the CO PPM, the average PPM, and a little bit in the mass flow rate. So now let's reduce the time scale factor again to 0 0.1 and increase the number of iterations to 200 and let's solve. Okay, we can see that the report plots are now starting to flatline. So if we have a look at the max plot, we can see that it's getting pretty flat, starting to decrease a bit here. And we can see that the mass average is still going up and the mass flow rate has seemed to plateau. So we can run this simulation again for a couple more iterations but it looks like the values are going to be pretty good. To investigate the maximum PPM and the average PPM, we can use the report, the reports. So if we go volume integrals and we choose the maximum, choose custom field function, the maximum PPM, we compute it. We can see that the maximum is 89.3. And if we do the same thing for the average, we can see that the average PPM is 23.4, it's 23.8. And now we can create some graphics. So if we expand and we can go create a plane. Sorry, if we display the mesh first, if we create a plane, we choose the ZX plane. So let's create plane 7. We can now plot contours of the custom field function. And if we create a new plane, we can have a look at the, at the concentration, or we can have a look at the PPM at the inlets, sorry, at the outlets. So if we draw the mesh, We move the plane up to the outlet height. And see the contours of the PPM here. As we can see, this outlet here is removing most of the carbon monoxide from the garage. So what we can do is we can investigate how much CO actually passes through the outlets. So if we go into surface integrals, we want to report a face average and we want to see how much CO is passing through the outlets. If we can compute and we can see that outlet one, which is up here, is removing the most amount of CO and it's decreasing as we go around the outlets.